Have you got an old Windows operating system that you don't want to let go of? Whether you're switching to a new PC or just want to keep an old operating system around, converting that hard disk into a virtual disk will let you access that old operating system on a new PC. In this video I'll go through step by step on how to convert your old hard disk into a virtual disk. Then I'll show you how you can boot it on a new PC either by dual booting it natively alongside your new OS or by creating a virtual machine to run it on. Let's get straight into it. I'm going to be converting this Windows 10 OS. The disk on this PC is 120GB SSD and it's currently using about 50GB of disk space and has around 68GB free. To convert this disk I'm using a free Microsoft tool called disk to vhd You can download the application from Microsoft. Type disk to vhd into a web search and it should be the first link in the list. It's a small application that doesn't need installing. You can run it directly. Once downloaded, extract the zip file and you'll see three versions of the app. We've got 32-bit, 64-bit and a version for ARM devices. Run the version which best suits the computer that you're using. You'll be greeted with a graphical interface with a few options to choose from. It's a simple tool that does just one thing and that is to convert a real physical disk into a virtual disk and store it in a single file. You'll see a list of volumes and disks including removable disks that are currently connected to the system. In my example here I've got a disk with three volumes. The first volume is the system or boot partition and the second one is the recovery partition. The third volume is the C drive containing my Windows 10 operating system and data. We can also see a volume labelled D which is a removable USB disk which is what I'm going to use to store the converted disk on. On other systems there could be more or less volumes depending on how the disk is partitioned. For example not every disk may have a recovery partition. First we need to choose the volumes to include in the conversion so I'll select the first three volumes and deselect the removable USB disk. Don't need to convert that, I'm just using it to store my newly converted virtual disk. Next, we need to specify a file name and location to store the new virtual disk. So I'll click on the three dots and then browse to my removable USB disk. I'll enter a file name for the new disk and click on save. We've got these three options in the top right corner. You can ignore the first one which is to prepare for use in virtual PC. Virtual PC is an obsolete virtualization application which is no longer available so you'll never need to select this option. The second option is use VHDX. VHDX is the format that the virtual disk will be saved in. If you don't select this option the new virtual disk will be saved in the standard VHD format. Which format you choose will depend on how you're going to be using the virtual disk. You have two ways that you can use the disk. The first one is to copy the virtual disk file to the new PC and then add a boot menu entry to it. This will enable dual boot on the new PC so that you can dual boot between the old OS and the new OS and use it natively i.e. using the physical hardware of the PC and not using any virtualization. This is a great way to access your old OS and it gives you the best possible performance and VHDX is the best choice for this scenario. If you have a pro or enterprise version of Windows you can use Microsoft's Hyper-V platform to add the virtual disk to a virtual machine. But if you're using a home edition of Windows then Hyper-V is not included so in that case you can use the free open source application called VirtualBox. Be aware that VirtualBox only supports standard VHD files and not VHDX files whereas Hyper-V supports both. So going back to the option to use VHDX I would recommend to always use VHDX except if you're going to be using a VM in VirtualBox. If you're going to be using VirtualBox then you should deselect this option and the disk will be created as a standard VHD file. By the way I'm not including VMware Workstation or Player in this video because VMware doesn't support VHD or VHDX disks directly. Although it is possible to convert virtual disks into a format that VMware can use if you really want to use VMware. And finally the last option is to use Volume Shadow Copy. You should definitely select this option. This allows you to convert the physical disk into a virtual disk while the operating system is running which is what I'm doing here. Once you've entered a file name and your chosen options click on Create to start the conversion. This can take a while depending on the size of your disk and the speed of your PC. Once the conversion is finished you'll see a message to say the disk export completed successfully. And here we can see the new virtual disk that's just been created. You'll notice that the size is only 46GB when the original disk was 120GB. Well the new virtual disk is actually 120GB but when viewed outside of the operating system it will only show the size of the actual disk space used rather than the full capacity of the disk. But when you boot into the OS it does show the actual size of the disk which is 120GB. Now I've got a virtual disk of my old OS I'll switch over to my new PC which is running Windows 11. First I'll show you how you can boot into your old OS natively on your new PC. 
This will turn your new PC into a dual boot system where you can switch between your old OS and your new OS. I'll copy the virtual disk from my USB disk onto the C drive of my new PC. To keep things neat and tidy, I'll create a folder called VHDX and paste the virtual disk there. Once it's finished copying, I'll right click on the file and select mount to mount the disk and make it accessible. The disk will then be mounted and it will be assigned the next available drive letter, which in my case is E. Now all we need to do is create a boot entry to the virtual disk, and to do that we just need to open up a command prompt with administrator access and type bcd boot e colon backslash windows, and you should see a message to say the boot files were successfully created. We've now configured this PC to be dual boot and when we restart we'll be able to choose which operating system to boot into. We can see my old Windows 10 OS as well as my new Windows 11 OS. Let's go ahead and boot into my old Windows 10 OS. I'll open File Explorer and take a look at the disks. The C drive here is my Windows 10 OS running on the virtual disk and the E drive is the physical disk of my new PC. That's the one where Windows 11 is installed. I usually rename the disks so it's easy to see at a glance which is which, but that's purely optional. We can see the disk is reporting the actual size of the original disk from my old PC, but we can also take a look at the virtual disk file if we browse to the physical disk and look in the VHDX folder. If you ever decide that you no longer need access to your old OS, it's just as easy to remove it. Boot into the physical Windows 11 OS, then browse to your VHDX folder and delete the virtual disk file. The file's too big to go into the recycle bin, so I'll click on yes to this message and the virtual disk will be deleted, and the disk space will be recovered back to the physical disk. Now all we need to do is remove the boot entry for the old OS, which will turn the system back into a single boot system. Open a run prompt and enter msconfig to open the system configuration window. Then click on the boot tab. Highlight the old OS and click on delete, then click on OK. You'll be prompted to restart and when you do restart you'll no longer see the dual boot menu and it will boot directly into the original Windows 11 OS. OK now let's take a look at how to access your old OS with a virtual machine. One benefit of using a virtual machine is that you can access both your new OS and your old OS at the same time. First I'll show you how to do this in Hyper-V as this works really well. As I've just deleted my virtual disk file, I'll need to copy it again from my USB disk. I'll create a new folder for the new virtual machine. I'll call it my Windows 10 OS, and I'll paste the virtual disk file there. As Hyper-V is not enabled by default, we need to go ahead and enable it. Click on the search box and type the word turn to bring up the turn Windows features on or off option. Go ahead and select that, then you want to check the box for Hyper-V and maybe just drill down to ensure all Hyper-V items are selected. Click OK and Hyper-V will be added to Windows and you'll need to restart for the settings to take effect. Once you've restarted Windows, click in the search box and start typing the word Hyper and it should bring up the Hyper-V manager. And you can pin the app to your start menu for quick access in the future. Let's open the Hyper-V manager. First click on Action, then go to New and select Virtual Machine. Click Next at the first wizard screen, then enter a name for your new virtual machine. Tick the box to store the virtual machine in a different location, then browse to the folder that we created earlier, where we saved our virtual disk. Then click Select Folder and click Next. Now we need to choose a generation for the new virtual machine. Generation 1 will create a VM that has a legacy BIOS, and Generation 2 will create a VM that uses a modern UEFI BIOS. I recommend choosing the generation that matches the BIOS type of your old PC. I'll choose Generation 2 and click Next. Next we need to specify how much RAM we'd like to allocate to the VM. I'll leave mine on the default 4GB for now, but you can change this anytime if you want to increase the RAM later. For the network connection, click on the drop down and choose Default Switch. The default switch is automatically created when you enable Hyper-V and it allows your VM to share the network card of your physical PC so that you can access the internet from your old OS. I'll click next and then I need to choose a virtual hard disk. Click on use an existing virtual hard disk, then click on browse and browse to the virtual disk we copied earlier. Double click on the virtual disk file to select it. Finally click on next, then finish. Right click on the VM and click connect, then click on start to boot up the virtual machine and load the OS. You'll be prompted again to click on connect. This opens up an enhanced session to the VM, 
and I recommend doing that, but you can also close this box without connecting and it will continue as a standard session. I find it better to use the enhanced session as this allows you to resize the window and it scales automatically. You can continue running the VM in a window or you can double click at the top of the window to go full screen. When you're in full screen mode, you have this connection bar where you can restore the screen back to a window or minimize the window altogether. The VM will continue to run in the background and you can switch between your new PC and old PC at any time. If you decide you no longer need access to this virtual machine, you can simply delete it. First, make sure the VM is powered off. Then right click on the VM and click delete. This will only delete the virtual machine from Hyper-V and not the VM or virtual disk file. So to delete the VM and virtual disk as well, you need to manually delete the files by opening the file explorer window, selecting all of the files and then clicking on delete. Okay, now let's take a look at running your old OS inside VirtualBox. I've quickly reverted this new PC back to how it was at the start of the video. I've already converted my old hard disk using disk to VHD and copied it to my Windows 10 OS folder. This time I created a standard VHD disk. Next, we need to download the VirtualBox application. So do a web search for VirtualBox and head over to the downloads page. As we're on Windows, I'll go ahead and click on Windows Hosts and the installer will download to my downloads folder. Optionally, you can download the VirtualBox extension pack as well as this provides extra features like support for USB 3, remote desktop and VM encryption. But I should point out that although the main VirtualBox application is open source, the extension pack is not. It's free to use for personal and educational use, but if you wanted to use it in a commercial environment, then you would need to purchase a license from Oracle. OK, I'll click on the VirtualBox installer. You may get this message about needing the Microsoft Visual C++ package if you don't already have it installed on your system. You can download it from this link, or if you're not happy going to random links from YouTube videos, then you can just do a web search for it and download it from Microsoft. Download and install that first, then come back and run the VirtualBox installer again. Click Next. Accept the license agreement and click Next. Click Next again. Click Yes at the Network Interfaces screen. Click yes on the missing dependencies screen, next again, and finally click on install to complete the installation. Click on finish which will then open up the app. Once you're in the VirtualBox app, click on new. I'll enter a name for the virtual machine. Then I'll click on the folder drop down and select other and browse to my Windows 10 OS folder. Then click on select folder. I'll click on type and select Microsoft Windows and change the version to Windows 10 64 bit as that matches my old OS. Next, I'll go to hardware and set the RAM to 4GB. And as my old PC was using a UEFI BIOS, I'll select this option to enable EFI, which will ensure my VHD disk boots successfully. If your old PC was using a legacy BIOS, then leave this box unchecked. And finally, click on hard disk and select use an existing virtual hard disk file and then click on the folder icon. We can then click on add and then browse to the virtual disk file that I copied earlier. And finally, click on choose. We can then click on finish to create the VM. I'll go ahead and click on start to start up the VM. Once the OS is loaded, you'll want to go ahead and install the guest editions. You can think of guest editions as a set of software drivers for the virtual machine. Installing the guest editions will massively improve the performance of the VM, as well as enable extra features like auto scaling of screen resolution, a shared clipboard, drag and drop between the host and guest OS, and many others. If you're wondering why I didn't install any guest editions when I used Hyper-V earlier, that's because Microsoft cleverly integrated the Hyper-V integration services into all versions of Windows since Windows 8, so no additional install is required for Hyper-V VMs. Click on Devices from the menu at the top and choose Insert Guest Edition CD Image. That will mount a virtual CD with the Guest Editions installer on it. Open a File Explorer window and double click on the Guest Edition CD to start the install. Just click Next all the way through the installer and then click on Finish. The VM will then restart. Once it's restarted, it's ready to use. You can resize the window and it will scale automatically. Or you can press the host key and F to go full screen. The host key is the right control key by default, so you would press the right control key and F to go full screen. And pressing it again will return it to a window. 
If you decide you no longer need this OS, make sure the VM is powered off. Go back into VirtualBox and right click on the VM and click Remove. If you click Remove only, only the virtual machine will be deleted. The actual virtual disk will still be on the physical disk, which you can continue to access by mounting the virtual disk in Windows. If you want to completely remove the VM, including the virtual disk, then click on Delete All Files. And that's it, you now know everything you need to know about running an old OS on your new PC, whether you're dual booting it natively or running it in a virtual machine. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more demos just like this one. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.